All right, not the best angle, but I'm gonna get some valves out. Starting with cylinder two. You remember this from last time, but get the this centered here and compress. Rotate. I forgot the magnet. I had to actually pry and tap these off last time. Oh, excuse me. There we go. <laughs> they are baked on just like the other side. Rotate and release. And I don't need to worry about cleaning them now because I'm going to set them aside and just get them set aside, label them. So I actually, I, I soaked this down outside just to get the, the biggest chunks that I scraped off. Um, once the valves are out, I'm gonna give it the actual more aggressive soaking, so. Not, not the worst, but uh, not great. Of course it's wet, which makes it look kind of funny, but. So, cylinder two, exhaust. Take our cylinder two, exhaust bag. Put it in like she. And there's a lot of, this is a lot of repeated motion, but I'm keeping all the parts together. So as such, I put them in the bag, take them all out, put them all in their bags, take them all out of their bags, clean them one by one, put them all back in their bags. But that allows me to keep them all together in matching pairs with as many mix and match things as I have to deal with on this engine. This, I do have the control two actually get it taken care of correctly. Take our brass hammer. There's one. Ugh, yeah, these are just baked on. So these should free spin, and you know, just in normal engine operation, all of these parts should be kind of free, sprint, free spinning and wiggling around with proper lubrication, but continuing the trend from the other side, I don't think this had the oil flow that we would be hoping for. So there you go. A little, some, some polished spots on the shaft. We'll check those dimensions and then some, hmm, more dark carbon buildup on this side. This is number two intake. Remember, at least from the U.S. passenger side. U.S. passenger side is all even numbers, whereas most other V8s do a one, two, three, four on one side. Five, six, seven, eight on the other. So we now have number four exhaust. Rotate. Crack. Pop off, pop off. You can see, let's get a little rhythm down. Oh yeah, so good and mucky. There we go, there's another exhaust. Remember, we'll be going through and lapping the cylinder head and reseating these, because that is just good work to do. So we have cylinder four, exhaust. Cylinder four, exhaust. Nice story. These are all nice and goopy. Let's get this out ahead of ourselves. Cylinder four, intake. There we go, cracks free, rotate. Tap it, tap. go. Release. That off. So this is the one that was a little bit burnt and it's got some loose carbon up top and then it's got that, I don't know if you guys can see it, but a little burnt section here where the carbon has actually burnt off. 
I'm not exactly sure what that is, but you can see it is still seating. There's still a shiny spot seating on the valve, but hopefully we get these all cleaned up and lap, yeah, lap the cylinder head so it has a new seating surface, and then it will be all happy hunky dory going forward. So that is cylinder four intake. So we're halfway. It's more of the same from there. I'll check in after that's done. All right, got those all out pretty quickly. These valve stem seals are cooked. This is what the other side looked like, but uh, this side, I think I mentioned it earlier, the PCV doesn't draw as much vacuum from this side, I don't think. So just there's a, a slightly more vacuum getting sucked into the engine. There's just not as much airflow through this. So the gases and com you know combustion gases and oil mist just tends to hang out and collect more grubbiness in here than the other side does. But here's our here's our reference point. That's what these looked like probably in 1997, and I don't think they have been refreshed since then. These are going to be going on. Uh, well, actually, no. Popping all of these off, uh, basically breaking and prying them off. Then that is as stripped down as the head is going to be, and it will get put in the nasty, gross, grubby tank to get all cleaned up. So there we go. We got it stripped down. Once these are off, that'll be as stripped as the head's going to get, and it'll come back all nice and shiny. The next step of this process we found that the, well, I'm getting ahead of myself there. I've already done those. So I've mentioned this before, and I think, I don't actually remember if I did footage or not from the other cylinder head, but this head in particular had a lot of baked on debris on the, particularly the exhaust ports. And we are going to use the valves to lap the aluminum cylinder head. And the way we do that, we do is you take your valve, so this is cylinder eight, uh, cylinder eight intake valve. And can you see that, that shiny edge? It is, it is shiny, which is good, but we are going to make it even shinier. You see that discoloration, how it's a little bit brighter. I don't think it's going to focus very well, but basically brighter in some areas and it gets darker. What you want to see is a, an even ribbon of shininess around that. That means that that full surface is sitting flush on the cylinder head when it closes. So what we're going to do is let's put a dab of dab of oil on that to guide its passage down. I line it up, shouldn't I? Get it. it goes in nice and buttery smooth. Tip it up a little bit. What we're going to do, the intake is better than the exhaust. It just seems to be sealing better. We're going to put some abrasive compound on the back side, back side of this valve, press it against the head, and spin it from behind. So my little, my little system here is I have a seven millimeter hex drive stuck into a piece of soft rubber hose. What I do is slurp this over the valve, chuck, and I have a three eighths drive chucked into my drill. Not an impact, but just an actual drill. Put it up against here, give it a buzz, and spin it out. So, I'll get you set up. We'll actually get it set up to go, and I will film that. So, this is the compound that I am using. Permatex Water Mix Valve Grinding Compound. I believe they also make one that might be oil or petroleum-based, but that sort of defeats the whole purpose because you want this to be abrasive. So, housekeeping item. This is liquid sandpaper like this literally this is one of the most destructive things you could ever have in your engine um but we are doing it for a very specific purpose what i am going to do after this so i take each valve match to each cylinder and i line the valve with that valve grinding compound i even i literally separate my hands left hand is the compound hand so i brush some on the valve hold it out set it in with use my right hand to put oil on it use my right hand on the drill only use my left hand to touch well, with a glove to touch the the compounded surface in and out then what i'm going to do is after that's done 
it also sprays that stuff down the cylinder. So I take the entire, the last, last step of cleaning. I got it all clean, or as clean as I care to, short of this last step, which is putting the entire cylinder head side by side, um, basically four rotations, like the bottom half of this, the upper half of this, bottom half of this, upper half of this, in the ultrasonic cleaner to literally vibrate the sand away. Because especially this material getting in here ruins your valves because it just goes into this tight tolerance chamber and grinds sand in there for all eternity. So this entire thing goes in the ultrasonic cleaner to buzz out all of this sandpaper, as do all of the valves. I should have I meant to, I should have done this before I cleaned them. I did do one pass through the ultrasonic cleaner with these, but I need to do it again because I am a goofball and I forgot that I still needed to do this. So just some things to remember there. So these ones have been done. These ones are next. I will say this one more time for dramatic effect. This stuff is liquid sandpaper. Be extremely careful where it goes. So that said, we will take our cylinder eight intake valve. So that's the surface we're working with here. How's that showing up? Yeah, actually that's pretty good. So here's the process. I got my left, my dirty hand. So grimy hand here, holding the stem. Take my compound very sparingly. I mean, you want it to be fully covered, but don't go to town with it. You also don't want to spin the drill up too fast and fling it everywhere. You want it very contained to just this whole shoulder here. And it will kind of self, if you put a little bit of extra on, which is what we're doing, it'll kind of self adjust. So then dirty hand here, dip this in oil, kind of run this down. So remember, this is our intake. So larger valve here. Remember, left dirty, grimy hand stays up here. Gently spin it in. It should go in really smooth because you got that nice film of oil. Then I take my little little tool here, left hand, grimy side, right hand, back here. So there we go. And then I'll set you back up here. And then, so I take my drill, 3 8 chuck, put it in here, start free, start above it, and I use pretty low speed. Feel that grinding? That is, that is steel on silica or sand on aluminum, so you'll feel it kind of binding and you'll hear it be a little bit rougher. As you do it for longer, it kind of smooths out. You hear that smoothing? It goes from more of a, you know, like a chunky sound to more of a smoother, more, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and I can feel it with my left hand. I can feel it getting smoother. Switch direction, free float, seat it, in and out. A little bit of pressure with my right hand pulling away, pulling it onto the cylinder head. Okay, that is plenty. So then, same thing, grimy left hand here. Can you guys still see it? Pop this off, use my right hand, push it through, grab it. Cleaned up the shaft a little bit too. So then take my right hand down on the oily section, take my rag, and remember these valves are going right in the ultrasonic cleaner after this. So it's not shiny, shiny yet, but you see that? You see that kind of dull gray? That is the contact surface. So we have a nice, even ground spot on the valve. Number eight, intake. Back in its bag. It's not shiny, shiny, but there's that even dull gray finish in that ring around it. That is exactly what we're looking for. Um, the polishing really comes from the, the heat 
and the consistent impact over, you know, hundreds of thousands of millions of RPMs. But that's what we're looking for, that dull gray, even ring around it. Do the same thing one more time for the exhaust. So I do maybe 20% more time and pressure on the exhaust. Here's a really good example here. If you, I'm not sure how well that shows up, but you can barely see any shininess. Um, exhaust valves are obviously hotter, <laughs> smaller, hotter. They just tend to get burnt. They get a lot more stuff caked on. Um, so there's practically no shiny, smooth edge. Um, so we're going to remedy that. With just a little more pressure, a little more time. So, same thing here. You know, don't be stingy with it, but give it uh, no more than it needs. And I isolate it to that shoulder now that we've seen where what part kind of tends to wear. I keep it to that area. It spreads itself around that there, so. Oil bath, tip it back, spread some of the oil down. Number eight, exhaust. In it goes. Dirty hand on the top, wiggle it in. And it's going in just silently, super smooth. That's exactly what we want. Grab it with my right hand. Give it a spin. You hear, hear how kind of crunchy that is? You can almost hear there's just more, more bigger bumps, so. Pop our little little tool on, slurp in place, hook it up to the drill, and I don't I don't know how well the audio will come through, but see if you can listen. I'm I'm gonna stay quiet now that you know how it goes and just listen. Switch direction. Okay. Let's inspect it. Remember, the steel is much harder than the aluminum, of course, and this compound is just dramatically more aggressive <laughs> on both of them. So you don't want to just sit here for a minute grinding away on full speed, because that'll That'll take more than you need, and I'm, realistically, I'm playing it safe rather than sorry, and I probably could do a lot more. But did you hear how it kind of, the pitch shifted? Like, compare that to before, just by hand. And that's what we want to see. So, I think that's our last one here. Let's get that cleaned up. Is that visible? There's still some kind of rust and carbon showing. You know, I, I shaved off the high point, but you can still see through. I, you know what, I think I will take another pass at that. Remember being very careful. Keep the grimy stuff up here. And now it's already got some on, so I'm just doing little bits and pieces. You know, just like four contact spots. More oil. Come on. Go to your home. Oh, you know what? I just touched the oily side onto the sandpaper. Isn't that dumb? So I'm going to try again. If I feel any grime, yep, doggone it. Mm. All right, so that's this might be just a case of playing it safe rather than sorry. I just got grime on that, and I do not want to drag it through. A tough lesson. So maybe that's it. <laughs> Let's see, just for the heck of it. Nope. Nope. My loss. But see, that's how just... It touched the edge just once, and I pushed it in, and I could feel the grime in there. So there you go. Well, that's two good passes. I guess I'm not doing a another one there. But, yeah, so that is lapping valves the quick and easy way. And 
you def definitely play it safe rather than sorry and then do visual inspections to see like because if you're just if you're not getting any color like if the the color isn't changing if the texture isn't changing then you can probably do a little bit more but if you're just sitting here going to town and you pull the thing off and it's all polished and shiny it's got this big shiny path you know good for you but you get to the point where if you're seating it too far down you want it to be consistent across all your cylinders you don't want it to vary too much so there we go and that's it for that one again don't know how that's going to show up so not crystal clear shiny smooth ring but you see it, it's just catching the light a little bit differently i did wipe it down with a rag which i immediately will throw out because i like to reuse rags and i do not want to accidentally use one with grease with grime all over it so you see that just dull gray ring? That's what you're looking for. You can just go to town on it and get a nice shiny little halo, but this is plenty for me. All of the content, the rust has kind of been, any rust that was on the valves is gone. Any carbon on the exhaust or gas and greasiness on the intake side, all cleared up. Give that a little polish. Yeah, so that's what we're looking for. That's what we got. Now that everything has been cleaned up and dried out, I'll show you what we did on the lapping. So we've got nice, even gray finish across. There is a little bit of pitting on the exhaust valves, which is why it's not a truly perfect mirror finish. But as you can see, there is an even ribbon of gray with an even nicer one here. So I'll show you, insert. No oil on it right now, but there's just a nice, smooth, very, very smooth matched surface on now all eight valves and all eight uh, contact points on the head. So just a little bit, a little bit of a quick view. That's, that one turned out really nicely across all of them. And that's it. So we are, uh, this is parts washer from cleaning that out, going to dump this and get a fresh batch of oil so we can dunk our valves and then put all the goodies back together, get this head finished up and maybe even install.